Good morning, Year 8, and welcome to yet another maths lesson. First of all, I hope you like my new look classroom. As you can see, I got a can of red paint and decided to paint various little areas to make it look a bit more colourful. To be honest, I'm not that sure I like it the way it is, so maybe I'll redecorate by the time of our next lesson. OK, moving on. Today we are on to Statistics Lesson 5. And our objective is what can you find from a grouped frequency table? Last week we met ordinary frequency tables. This week we're looking at grouped frequency tables. Our success criteria, bronze, understands how to record data in a grouped frequency table. Silver can find the modal class from a grouped frequency table. And gold can find the median class from a grouped frequency table. Now, keywords then are grouped, frequency, class, modal and median. But before we start on this path, I'd like you to have a go at today's Fast Five. You'll notice that the first two questions are in red, the last three questions are in blue. Where the questions are in red, they have something to do with the current topic, and where they are in blue, they are questions to do with a previous topic. So, I would like you to pause the video and have a go at these five questions and then unpause the video when you are ready to mark them. OK, let's have a look at the answers. Right, question one, the mean score in a test for 10 pupils is 17. What was the total score for all 10 pupils? Remembering that the mean is the total divided by the number of pupils. So the total divided by 10 is 17, means that the total must be 17 times 10, 170. Question two, can you have a mode which is not a number? If so, give an example. Well, yes, you can have a mode that is not a number. For instance, if you asked a class to name their favourite pets, and they all listed their favourite pets, and most people like dog, then dog would be the mode. If you ask them for their favourite TV shows, and most people like Coronation Street, then Coronation Street would be the mode, and so on. Question three, simplify the ratio 12 to 4. Since both numbers divide by 4, it simplifies to 3 to 1. If you would put 6 to 2, dividing each number by 2, you've gone halfway, but not full way. And you need to go full way on a simplifying the ratio question. Question four, share 40 pounds in the ratio five to three. Add up five and three, five add three is eight. You've got eight shares. 40 divided by eight is five. So each share is worth five pounds. The first lot, five times five pounds is 25 pounds. And the second lot, three times five pounds is 15 pounds. Finally, Peter and Susie share some sweets in the ratio eight to nine. Susie gets seven more sweets. How many does Peter get? Well, if Susie gets seven more sheets, sweets, she gets one share more. One share is seven sweets. Peter gets eight shares. So Peter gets eight lots of seven sweets. Eight times seven, Peter gets 56 sweets. OK. Right. Hopefully you got four or five out of five on those. If not, not to worry too much. Let's move on. Right, before we start the main bulk of today's lesson, I'd like to introduce you to the concept of two different types of data that we need to know about right now. There are various types of data, but these are the, the main two that you need to know about at the moment. The first one is discrete data. Discrete data. And that's data which can only take particular values. For instance, the number of goals scored in a football match. You can get one goal, two goals, three goals, four goals. You can't get 4.1 or 4.12, 5.3, etc. You can only get an actual number. Scores in a test. Number of pets. Shoe size. Yes, you can get six, 6.5 or six and a half, sorry, and seven. But you can't get six and a quarter or six and a third. They can only take particular values, and when they can only take particular values, it is called discrete data. Then we have continuous data, and continuous data is data which can take any value. 
For instance, things like height, weight, length, and time, these can take any value. The data is continuous. Somebody can be 156.3 centimeters, somebody else can be 156.31, 156.317. Any value can be used for this particular type of data and therefore it is continuous. And since continuous data can take any value, we tend to record it in grouped frequency tables. And we'll see what these are on the next slide. Right, continuous data must be grouped to use in a frequency table. Inequalities are often used to avoid overlaps for the groups. Inequalities, eh? Let's see exactly what we mean by inequalities. Well, if we just pop back to this slide for a second, this is a grouped frequency table down here. And here's the data that we're going to have to record into this grouped frequency table. 10 people recorded their heights in centimetres, 172.3, 168.7 and so on. You'll notice that if we did it like we did last week, if we just recorded the heights as they are, we would have 10 different heights down here, a tally, one of each, and a frequency, one of each. Wouldn't be much point. If instead we group the data into groups, 160 to 165, 165 to 170, 170, 175, and so on, then we can find a place to put each of these, and there will be so many in each group. But it's the inequalities that I want to talk about first. So let's take this column, this height column, and let's look at it in a little bit more detail. You'll notice that what we've got written is 160, We've got a less than sign, we've got X, we've got this new sign that some of you may have seen before, some of you may not, and we've got this sign, uh, number 165 at the end here. Right, so let's rewrite this. Um, 160 less than, less than X, and then this new symbol, and then, oops, and then 165. And the way that we read this, we read this as 160, oh, let's not use capitals, don't want to shout. 160 is less than X, is less than or equal to 165. Just reduce the size of this slightly so that I can extend all that and get it all on one line. 160 is less than X, is less than or equal to 165. This sign you're all familiar with, less than. 160 is less than X. But this symbol means is less than or equal to is less than or equal to. Let me underline that. And what that means is that all the numbers that are in this group have got to be bigger than 160. 160 is less than x. But x itself is less than or equal to 165. So 165 goes in this group. 165 goes in this group. If we then look at the next group, we then look at the next group, 165 less than x. Less than or equal to 170. We then look at this. It starts with 165 less than x. And what this means is that x has got to be bigger than 165. So 165 does not go in this group. 165, that little bit there means less than or equal to 165. 165 goes into this group, not this group. Now, the reason I've spent some time going over this is so that you can be certain where an exact height of 165 centimetres will go. 
it goes in the first group and not the second group. This is to be careful and to make sure we don't get any overlaps. If we'd just written 160 to 165 as the first group and 165 to 170 as the second group, then it wouldn't have been clear where we would have put the height of 165. And that would have not been any use to us at all. So that is not something that we do. We have to use inequalities when we are talking about grouped data. OK, so there's our inequalities. Now, once we've got our inequalities, we then have to record this data by marking a tally into our group frequency table. And the way we do that is we look at each one and we put a line in the tally column as we meet each one. 172.3 is between 170 and 175. So we go in here and we put a tally in there. There's a tally. 168.7 between 165 and 170. So we put a tally in there. 180.5 is between 180 and 185. We put a tally in there. 175, there we go, our first one that could theoretically have gone in two groups, but because this is the one with less than or equal to 175, we put it in this group. 177.8 between 175 and 180 goes in this group. 166.6 goes in this group. 180, another one that could have gone theoretically in two groups, but now only goes in this one. 164.9, the top one. 178.6, and 179. Oops. Right, and there is our tally chart our tally column completed. Incidentally, as we go through these, cross them off as you go. And remember, in a tally, once we get to a total of five, we cross it through like a little gate. Now, let me move forward. Once we've completed the tally table, we then add up the amount of tallies in each row and put our total in the frequency column. So there we have our frequency table completed. Okay, now that's all there is to completing a grouped frequency table. What I would like you to do is just get a little bit of practice in completing grouped frequency tables. There are two examples here. Record the shoe sizes in the frequency table in the red section. This is some discrete data and record the ages in the frequency table in the orange section. Again, some discrete data here. If you get the idea fairly quickly, there's only need to do one of these, but you will have to copy it down onto a sheet of paper. Pause the video while you do this, please, and then unpause the video when you are ready to mark your answers. OK, let's move on. Well, in fact, before you mark the ones that you've just done, here is another example, this time with continuous data, which I would like you all to do. Again, you will need to copy out the table, do a tally and complete the frequency table. Pause your video now, please, and unpause it when you are ready to mark the, uh, the answers that you've done. Thank you. OK. If you've done these correctly, these are the answers that you should have in your frequency columns. So red 37117, orange 365464, and green 416543. Now, so the things to remember at this point, when grouping data, it's incredibly important that you get the inequality signs the right way round. They will always be less than signs. There's one being a less than, and one being a less than or equals to. Depending on how you choose your groups, 
they can come in either order. So you might start with a less than and then with a less than or equal to, or you could even have the less than or equal to first and the less than second. But the thing to remember is you will never have greater than signs in group frequency tables. Never, ever, ever. So remember that because it's really important. All right. Now, moving on. Our success criteria for today is not only to know how to complete group frequency tables, but it's how to find the modal class and how to find the median class. The modal class is incredibly simple. If you were able to find the mode from a frequency table last week, as I hope you all were, then finding the modal class is just as simple. As the data is grouped, you can't work out the exact mode. Remember, the mode is the one that appears most often. But you can work out the modal class. And the modal class is the group of values in the table with the highest frequency. So what we need to do is we need to look for the highest frequency down here. Is it 5? Is it 16? Is it 21? Is it 32? Is it 11 or is it 15? Do, 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 do. This is our highest frequency, 32. But that isn't our modal class. That is just the highest frequency. Our modal class, oops, using capitals again, our modal class is the class at the left hand side here. 30 and in this example unfortunately they've used two inequalities which is incorrect we should have started with a less than and then x and then a less than or equals to and finally a 40. so there is our modal class and the reason that they should not have used less than or equals to twice is because we would not know where to put a score of 30. This says less than or equals to 30, and this says x is greater than or equal to 30. So 30, we wouldn't know which class to put it in. So this is an error here. All these signs going down the left here should all be just less than signs. OK, but as an example to show how we find the modal class, this is ideal. You look for the highest frequency. Let's make that note. Look for the highest frequency. And that is all you have to do to find the modal class. Moving on. The median class. Last week, as you know, we looked for finding the median in a frequency table this is very similar this is the group the middle value lies in and you can find the middle value by adding one to the total and dividing by two so the first thing we do is we total up the frequency column 5 add 16 is 21 add 21 is 42 add 32 is 74 add 11 is 85 and 15 is 100 so we've got 100 data values now if you remember our formula for finding the median was the number of data values add 1 and we divide that by 2. So in this case we've got 100 data values and we add 1 to that and we divide that by 2 and 100 add 1 is 101. Divide that by 2 gives us 50.5. So we want we want the 50.5 value. Now that might sound weird, the 50.5 value, but all we need to know is the row where the 50.5 value will be. Well, in this first row, we've got five. In the second row, we had another, we add another 16 values, five add 16. Up to here, we've now got 21 values in total. Then we've got another 21. So up to this point, 21 and 21, up to this point, we've got 42 values. And then we add on another 32 values. Up to this point, we've got 74 values. So our 50.5 value must lie after the 42nd value and before the 74th value. So our 50.5 value 
must lie in this row. It must lie in this row. So the median class, again, is 30 less than x less than or equal to 40. All right, I'll just do that one last time. And notice one more time that there is a mistake in this table. These should all be just less than signs instead of less than or equal to. But the idea, the main idea that I'm trying to get across to you is to find the median class, we need to know where the middle value would be. And the middle value in this case is the 50.5th value, which we find by adding up until we get to where the 50.5th value will be. And that gives us the median class. Okay. So now some questions for you to do. For each of these grouped frequency tables, find the median class and the modal class. You'll need to copy these down, um, although you may actually not need to copy these down. You may be able to do these without copying them down, um, but you will still have to show some workings. So pause the video, please, and have a go at these questions. OK, there are your answers. Red and orange. You'll notice that in some cases the median class and the modal class are the same. However, when it comes to examination questions, this is very unlikely to be the case. Two more examples, more complicated figures. Again, the modal class extremely simple to find. The median class requires a little bit more workings. Pause the video, please. Copy them out if you feel you need to. OK, here are your answers. There are the answers. And in this case, the answers to both median class and modal class are the same. Right, year eight, that's the end of today's session. I hope you understand now how to find the median class and modal class for grouped frequency tables. Tomorrow we'll be continuing this with possibly the most complicated idea for group frequency tables, which is estimating the mean. Thank you very much and have a nice day.